Explosions are really interesting to film in slow motion. The only problem is that commercially available cameras in terms of consumer cameras, such as this Casio EX F1, don't have frame rates that are really sufficient to film the, the rapid events of an explosion. Now when you film things underwater, the uh, viscosity and the density of the water slows things down considerably, which is why I built this enclosure. This is made out of Lexan, it's, uh, I think it's 0 0.093 inches thick, or 2 millimeters, and it has uh, aluminum brackets on all the sides, and it's sealed with silicone sealant, as you can see over here. And it's not completely watertight, I've had some water in there for about an hour, and as you might be able to see here, it does leak a little bit, but it's pretty minor, and it's quite resistant. So. What are we filming today? Well, first off, this is the housing for a flare. This was actually a bear banger that's been fired. And I took out the uh, old propellant charge, which happens to be a shotgun primer. And these shotgun primers that I bought for uh, loading shotgun shells happen to, oops, happen to fit in there. If I can get a focus. So by attaching these to this flare launcher, I can uh, fire these underwater. Now originally what I tried to do is break off most of the housing so that I could capture the whole explosion, and that worked out well enough. But what's interesting is when you leave this on, this has an opening in the end where the flare used to go. And of course this gets filled with water, and when the explosion comes out of the primer, the gas tries to expand and escape from this housing, or this case, but uh, apparently it can't escape fast enough out of the end here, so it ends up uh, just shattering this container, which is rather surprising because these primers are quite small. They contain one grain of composition, which is about 65 milligrams. So I'm going to try filming these in uh, high speed again. I'm going to do 300 and 600 frames per second, and I might do a, another 1200. That plastic housing has completely been uh, busted off of this. You can see the uh, little cup that contains the priming compound is protruding out of the housing there. And the pieces are, you can see, this is a piece that was from the, the end of the flare, or the, the flare housing. And that's a fairly big piece. This was as well, you can see there's a straight edge on it. Same with this. And then all the rest. All these small fragments were all from closer to the actual charge, or closer to the primer. And let me see if I can find one. Here we go. Some of these have a large number of small cracks in them. If that'll focus. And I don't know if that's due necessarily to the shattering ability of the primer explosive, or just a characteristic of the plastic where it doesn't it doesn't uh, deform, it just cracks. But in order to try to determine that, I can take a piece here, try to break it. And you can see it's actually quite tough, it's quite flexible. So for this to break the way it did, you, you would think there would have to be a very sudden force applied to it, and quite a significant force applied to it. And that is really shown by the small fragments that are left with this. So there you have it. That's what happens when uh, a primer goes off underwater. Now let's look at the high-speed footage to see what's really happening here. So first of all, this is at 600 frames per second, and you'll see that the explosion still progresses a bit too fast for us to be able to really tell what's happening. If we slow it down just to look at the individual frames, it's still pretty interesting. The gas bubble is almost a perfect sphere, and as it collapses, it expands again, and collapses again, and expands again. 
Slowing that down further, this is shot at 1200 frames per second. And again, it takes place quite fast. So if we slow that down and look at it frame by frame, let's see what happens. You'll notice here there is a little stub of casing on there, and you would think the gas would be able to escape around that, but as you can see, that little bit of casing is shattered too. This is at 300 frames per second, and again, of course, it's really, really fast, but I just thought I'd throw it in there because uh, it's still pretty cool to see, and this is a second shot at 300 frames a second. And the next little sequence that's coming up is slowed down frame by frame, and this has some of the coolest frames I've captured, so I've slowed it down a lot. Very nice shot. This next one's at 600 again with the casing on there. And you can see a little bit more in this one. But again, it, the, the explosion, even though it's slowed down by the water, is still occurring so quickly that we can barely see anything. So again, we'll slow it down frame by frame. And I've disabled sampling on here so that you can pause the video if you want and look at all these frames individually. This has got to be one of my favorite shots. Now at 1200 frames per second, we can really start to see what's going on. Although it played back at 30, so slowed down 40 times, you can't really see that much. We have to go frame by frame again to see exactly what's happening. And that is a very interesting shot. So I'll leave you with a few still images. This is a gas bubble at maximum diameter, and I had to wait until the bubble is at its maximum size when it stops expanding and starts contracting before I could get a, a clear shot that wasn't blurry. Even though this shot was taken with the uh, one thirty-two hundredth of a second exposure, or shutter speed rather. This is a shot of the casing bursting, uh, taken at 300 frames per second with the one two thousandth of a second shutter speed. And it's interesting, you can actually see something. This is the frame following it immediately, with the gas bubble near its maximum diameter. This one again is at 300 frames per second. And the shutter speed in here is either 1 3200ths or might have been 1 4000th of a second. You can see it's getting darker and you can see the gas escaping from the little vent holes in the launcher on the bottom right. And this is the frame that immediately follows it. This has got to be one of my favorite frames. It's very, very clear. It's probably the clearest frame I have. It's in the highest resolution. Obviously, it's in. Uh, it was shot in uh, 512 by 384 pixels. It's the highest uh, slow motion resolution on this camera. And it's probably one of my favorite shots. But my favorite shot of all, for some reason, is this one. This was shot at 600 frames per second. You probably remember seeing the video from this from earlier. I just found that the the framing on this shot was perfect. The lighting was perfect. I managed to get my arm out of the way so that the lights could shine perfectly on the the gas bubble, and uh, it just turned out really well. So I'm going to show this one for a little bit longer and uh, hopefully use it for the thumbnail. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry if I was just babbling for too long, but I just like discussing these things and uh, tried to leave the stills up and have some very slow frame by frame stuff so you can uh, pause the video and look at all the individual frames. Um, until next time, thanks for watching.